painting an app. So I had someone ask me to do a paint job on this amplifier for them, a guitar amplifier for uh, their busking. Interesting hobby. So I guess when you're out playing guitar in public, it's, it's nice to have a really flashy amp. Anyway, we're going to go over the process for painting this. It's kind of an odd material, as you may have noticed. So we're going to try and get a uh, slightly flatter, smoother look to it. We're also going to paint the metal grill for the front of it. And uh, yeah, that's about it. This thing is getting an iridescent red finish, which is kind of neat. It, iridescent, uh, in this case, means that as you change the angle that you're looking at it from, it's going to appear to be a slightly different hue. So it's got a little bit of color shift to it. And then we're going to do a little bit of an airbrushed black vignette, if you will, around the edges, almost like a burst of effect. And a pearl orange grill. Bright colors on this one. And that's about it. We might do a, a custom badge for the front of it or something, but that's not really relevant to painting, so I probably won't bother putting that in there. So this, as it stands, has been taken apart, uh, not fully disassembled because that's unnecessary, but the handles, the corner protectors, the feet, all of that have been removed. And everything that isn't getting paint, for example, the front here, has been masked off so that, also that it won't get painted. So as with almost any paint job, the first thing that we need to do is scuff this stuff up so that paint or primer in this case will stick to it. And I'm going to try and get it just a little flatter as I do that. So, let's begin with that. So I've got a couple of implements that I'll be using to sand this. First of all, I have a DA sander. This one's pneumatic. DA means uh, dual action, by the way. It has more than one spin pattern so that it doesn't leave round swirl marks in your project. So I'm using this with 400 grit paper. Uh, I also have a green scotch brake pad. Now these you can find at lo your local paint shop most likely, but if you're having trouble locating them, there are those scotch pads for uh, cleaning dishes essentially, for stainless steel cookware. They've got a sponge on one side and this exact same thing on the other. You can always use one of those if you need to. What I'm using this for is getting around, it'll be difficult to see it from there if I'm not mistaken, but there are some screws that are still holding the amp together. We didn't take it apart completely. So I'm going to use this to make sure that I get those scuffed up. This reaches into places that sandpaper won't necessarily get into. You do not need a dual action sander. You can simply grab yourself some 220 grit or 400 grit, 320, even 600, and go at it by hand. But this is to make it quicker for me. So, let's get started. sanding is done. I've got this whole thing scuffed up as well as the grill. Now if I was going for a very smooth mirror finish uh, as a finished product for this, I would have had to sand considerably further and I would probably be applying a filler to this. So as most of you are familiar with, amplifiers don't have a really smooth surface to them. They've got a very textured finish. That's why it's important to go over everything with that scotch brake pad and make sure that you've scuffed not just the peaks of those uh, textured areas but also the valleys. So now that that's done, it's time to clean it. So I'm going to take a shop towel and some wax and grease remover. As I've said in my previous videos, if you don't have wax and grease remover, 
You can get away with something like lighter fluid or Windex, something that functions as a degreaser and that doesn't leave a big residue on your product. It's very important to clean these things once you're done sanding them. Even if you've got one of those rare items that you don't actually need to sand, it's important to make sure that it's not dirty when you go to paint it. So, see that I'm taking off quite a bit of residue with that. So as I said, the second step after you've sanded it, or the next step after you've sanded it, is to go ahead and make sure that you clean it really well. All right, once your product has been cleaned, it's time to start painting. So we're going to begin with a primer. Primer in this case is important because it not only helps adhesion, but it is thick and sanded. So if you're not looking to change the texture finish on your amp at all, and you're just looking to add a color, you can get away with an adhesion promoter here or a thin primer. In this case, I'm looking to fill in a little bit of that texture and make it come out a little smoother. So I'm just going to be using a rattle can primer for this, two rattle can primers actually. Uh, the first I will be using is a filler primer. So a filler primer is thicker than a standard primer. It's going to go ahead and fill in a little bit of that, that texture that we're not looking to have so prominent on there. You can kind of see, well you won't be able to see in there, but when you get a, filler, a can of filler primer, if you decide to use a spray can, which is perfectly adequate for this, uh, you'll notice that the nozzle on it is slightly wider than that of a normal primer. It's because it's putting out a thicker material and more at once. So I'm going to do that for starters with this, then I'm going to wait for it to flash off, probably about 10-15 minutes, and then I'm going to go over it with a normal primer, which I will be sanding tomorrow. Now I've elected to use, rather than my standard gray primer, uh, a red primer for this one. It's just a standard flat red primer. It's not very red. It's more this brownish color. But because I'm painting over these things with reds and oranges, this is going to make it easier for me to achieve full coverage and for my paint to appear even. It will be even, but it'll just look even sooner. Well, that's about all there is to say about that. I'm going to go ahead and start priming this. Primer is very bad for you. It, uh, it's got a lot of solvent in it, and it's really hard on the lungs if you breathe it in. So I'm going to throw on a respirator, and then you'll see me give these a coat of a filler primer, followed by a coat of the red. And when we come back after that, it'll be time to sand the primer, smooth things out a little bit more, and get ready for the color.